I think this is our group. If you guys want to get started. Jenny, did you want to go around to do introductions? Well, that's fine. I just felt last time, I did, maybe Matt knows all of us, even though we didn't get a chance to introduce ourselves. I just No, I think it's a good idea. idea. All right, I'll start. Um, Ginny Wani, uh, retired Master Naturalist Coordinator for MSU Extension. Um, I've only lived in Cascade about three years because my 91-year-old mother lives here, so I moved close. Um, used to be on the Ada Parks and Rec uh, Board Committee, whatever you want to call it, and I volunteer currently, I'm insane, for about seven different conservation <laughs> nonprofits. Keep my fingers in a lot of pie, shall we say. So you know a little bit about parks. Yeah. Yes, I would say so, yes. I'm Mike Reese. Uh, I'm a landscape architect and I uh, moved to Cascade Township about three years ago. Been on the committee for a couple of years now. Um, have a third and fifth grader um, in Forest Hill Central. Um, yeah, that's about it. Who's after Mike? Anyone else? No official order. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. I guess I'll. I'll chime in. I'm Dawn McDonald, um, longtime Cascade resident, probably, I guess it's probably about 35 years now. Um, I've been involved in the Parks Committee for a number of years, as well as uh, some of the initiatives to create both Burton Park and Peace Park. Uh, I also served as a board member for the Land Conservancy of West Michigan, and also am um, a uh, advisor for TART Trails, which is up in Traverse City um, and my kids are grown and just kind of hanging out and doing the kind of things that you get to do before you actually retire. Matt, you want to go next? Sure. I'm uh, Matt Douglas. I teach at Grand Rapids Community College, Botany and Zoology and anatomy and physiology as well. I also taught at Michigan State University and Aquinas College here. I formerly taught at Boston University, uh, came back home here. I've lived in Cascade for about 20 years, uh, just up the hill from the park that we've been talking about. Uh, I write textbooks, uh, of course, in botany and zoology, parts of anatomy and physiology, and I also write scientific papers that no one reads. And I work with monarch butterflies and the migrations of monarch butterflies. I've done that for 40 years. That's about it. Cool. All right. What do we have left, Alan? Peace. I don't want to go after everybody else's. I mean, come on. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Alan. Peace. Christ. Uh, I guess my claim to fame is I've been a resident for 45 years. Wow. So I've uh, been on the PARS committee. Uh, not as long as Dawn, but almost. Um, and that's it. I mean, father, my two kids are in high school right now. One's a sophomore, the other one's a freshman at Forest Hill Central. So, and I can I can also say my claim to fame is I'm probably the only one on the parks committee that's actually played in the parks as a kid. So. Yes, you're up, Grace. Okay. Um, thank you, Alan, for being the buffer between the um, <laughs> between Matt and myself. But I'm the new supervisor, um, and I just think that the Parks Committee has the opportunity to do so much thing, so many things, and now is the time to do them while we still can. So I want to help um, actually take the steps to get to to start improving. Um, the number and number of parks we have and work with you guys. I'm really appreciative of how um, 
what a great group we have. So I'm just happy to be a part of it. I think we talk a lot about Parks and Cascade, but let's start doing some stuff too. All right. Well, Brian and I, my name is Steve Peterson. I'm the Community Development Director. Brian and I are the staff members. So um, I've been with Cascade for um, starting my 24th year now. And I guess I'll let Brian introduce himself. Yeah, I'm Brian Hillbrands. I'm the planner working with Steve here, and I've been here just over a year now, so a little less than Steve, but happy to help the Parks Committee and um, everything we've got going on here. So we got a few things on our agenda this morning. So the first one was to approve the minutes from the April 20 meeting. Anybody have any comments or concerns? No? No. Nope. We'll take that as an acceptance of approval of the minutes. All right. Um, just a couple of things, action items on the agenda. We've been talking about the master plan survey. Um, I know, I think it's it was Ginny and was it Joe and Mike were kind of yep. working on that. So I think yep. Brian sent around some, you know, just starter survey questions to kind of get the get the ball rolling. And did you say you were going to have Mike kind of report on what your subcommittee was doing? Yeah, yeah. that works. Um, yeah, Ginny and Joe uh, kind of went through and uh, took a um, some some a look at this, and then uh, the three of us had a. Um, talk some more about it. And uh, we kind of went through each of the questions and then looked just kind of a global uh, look at it and what we wanted to accomplish and what information we wanted to get with the survey. Um, I don't know if, uh, you know, we can go through. Um, so, so basically it was, you know, kind, kind of, a, we had the survey from the plan, you know, six, seven years ago. Um, so these questions kind of paralleled that. Um, so I, th I think it's good to have a lot of the same ones so we can compare, you know, see how the answers have changed, um, but then also adapt it um, with some of the current trends from the pandemic and other things going on. Um, so one of the, a couple of the major kind of more global things we wanted to accomplish was um, seeing how the pandemic affected people's usage of the parks, um, not just last year, but also moving forward. Is it more of a permanent change or is it going to be back to what you were doing before? Um, were there new parks you discovered, that sort of thing? Um, we also, and there was a question about this previously, but talking about the millage for parks and um, trying to kind of get that wording correct um to make sure people understood what what that was and what could be done with it um and then also uh looking at you know having a introducing programming um or a parks director program director things like that trying to go beyond just the facilities and amenities and maintenance um to see what people think of, of that as, you know, Grace mentioned, trying to uh, ex expand the parks offerings a little bit more. Um, Jenny, from a global scale, is that pretty accurate summary? Yeah, I would just also add, it was the exact same survey questions from 2014. Um, and I'm not sure why, but you left out the two questions, 10 and 11, that were on the trails, and we put them back in there. So um, I'm still, cause I'm new, I'm still a little confused about, is there a millage just for trails and pathways and how that all fits with the park? But anyway, we added those questions. Sure, yeah, that's years. a good, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, when Brian and I took a look at it, we took that out um, just because the board did do a separate survey and they did do the um, parks millage or the pathway millage for the pathways under construction. So there is a separate millage for the pathways. 
But we and can ask anything it. happening with that. Did the bridge get built? What's kind of the follow up, I guess? Yeah, so it's all happening. So there's been what three of the pathways built um, Cascade Road, kind of south of 36th Street, Cascade Road, um, kind of between Burton and 28th Street, and Cascade Road um, Hall to McNiter. So those have all been built. Um, and we are in the process right now of, you know, getting all the permits through the Federal Highway and the Road Commission and MDOT to do Burton Street, which includes the bridge over the expressway. So those are all either done or in, in process. Well, we, um, we, I don't know, Mike, was it three hours? We were, I mean, we've actually rewritten all the questions, um, and so we kind of changed the pathways questions to include more things like, you know, what would be your wish list regarding, would you like, you know, trails to connect to each park? Would you like a trailhead locate, you know, some of the kind of the next step things. Sure. Yeah, I think the trails could be not, you know, not as specific as locations, you know, if that was done in the uh, trail survey recently, but, um, as part of the, you know, related to the parks, um, finding a way to still uh, integrate that. Um, I don't know if we, you know, necessarily want to go just for the sake of time, because um, it did take a while when the three of us talked to go through each question and talk about it. Um, but we could, uh, I just real briefly touch on a couple of the items and then maybe we could send out the markups by email to the group um, with kind of how we have the questions. Would that sound good, Steve, Grace, everyone? That sounds yeah. good to me. Okay. Um, one, and I guess a couple of them, we had questions uh, for, for you, Steve, since you were you know part of it uh when the last plan was done um one of them was the number three the uh it was about which quadrant do you live in and it gave like six numbers i guess six quadrants broke breaking up the township um and then there was another question later in the survey that also referenced the quadrants um and that was like what wh you know what facilities would you like to see in which quadrant? Um, so I was just curious, or we were curious what uh, was done with that information and was it really useful last time? Because we thought about potentially deleting that to keep the, as a way to keep the survey shorter. Yeah, it was just to try to way to geographically break up the township. So, um, you know, we could get a response if people felt like there was a need so for instance, in that Southeast corner of the township, we really don't have any amenities. Um, so it was just a way to try to geographically break up some of that so we could get some responses that way. Okay. Do you know if um, you guys are the consultant, like kind of how, how much that was used in drawing conclusions about where people live versus where they want the, um, improvements or was it still kind of difficult to use that information? Just, I mean, it probably depends on the number of survey responses and how it's spread out to really be able to use that information or not. Yeah, I don't think we had anything that correlated to where people live, but I think it was helpful to hear, you know, you know, the responses about, you know, whether or not they thought there should be something in you know, particular areas of the township, again, areas, you know, that are underserved possibly. So that was helpful. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I think that'd be helpful in identifying, yeah, kind of the underserved areas. Um, not sure if we need the one about where you live, um, if there wasn't a, like a lot of correlation between it, but that's one up for discussion as a potential way to shorten some of the questions. Um, Cause we wanted to add a cup, add a few questions as well. Uh, one being, let's see, we worded it. 
Since the onset of the pandemic, how has the importance of parks, trails, and open space changed in terms of its priority in your daily life? Uh, changed greatly, slightly, or no change? Is this question? hard for you without seeing it? Do you want me to try to share the screen? Uh, that'd be great. Because you think I can do this. Okay. It's a lot We'll give the, oh, the host has disabled participant screen sharing. So that's Steve, you and Brian, I guess you have to. Yeah, do Cassie, something. can you, Cassie can you let Jenny share her screen? I can try to figure out how. Yeah. Brian will help, see if she can help. He can help Cassie. Okay. So you got to do that. If you click on the participants, it shall box should populate on the right, and you should be able to allow them to share. Well, See, we Alan, you, that. you have a lot to add. <laughs> well. Thanks to COVID, I've used a lot of Zoom and Teams and Skype. We should be all silent. Yeah, I hear a new side effect is more plastic surgery because people are looking at their faces and deciding they uh, don't like what they see. Give it another shot, Jenny. Okay. Got it. Okay, Mike, you want to keep rolling? Sure. Um, so I guess just going through some of the demographic stuff is helpful in the beginning. Um, just kind of shortened uh, some of this. Um, talked about number three, adding number four, um, number five, um, looks like it's getting cut off. I bit. know. Now my next problem is how do I, Alan, how do I move it? How do you move what? What do you need to, to move? My document. I can't arrow. Oh, here I go. Here go? I go. Sorry. Yeah. Here I go. Okay. So this one kind of ties in as a follow up to the um, pandemic question so how we want to tie those two together we should comment that the the black are kind of what we got to and the red was joe's original edits and the blue were original the original my edits hmm. okay so let's sorry it's it's kind of messy now we got to get to six which we Six. wanted to get rid of. We were just, yeah, going to delete. I don't know if there was um, a lot of information there that we could use. Um, number seven, just shortening it. Um, these are tough just from, you know, summertime versus wintertime or how people kind of read into it. Um, rarely and never were basically the same. Less than once a year is never. So we just, Figure we could make it a few columns there. Um, some of these, you know, it was selecting up to five that we thought it might be good to um, rank them instead. Um, you know, you might have one or two that are a clear favorite, um, but it's all weighted the same as five. And then the sixth one is the same as the bottom so being able to rank might give a better list and then each of these when you get the results will have an average ranking um, just to kind of better track things so that should be available to do in the survey software and then we change all the questions to be consistent about ranking as opposed to selecting or circling or we have the language be the same yeah because then, yeah, number nine, the next one was rank in order. Um, and we didn't take the time to 
uh, we might want to change, you know, some of these options. We didn't go through each one in detail. Um, so that's something that we can Except talk about. Except for, uh, do we allow hunting? We weren't sure about E. <laughs> oh yeah. The only place that? we allow, yeah, the only place we allow hunting is Peace Park. Okay. Hmm. And that's because residents requested, or that was part of the deal with the DNR, or? Yeah, we got we got more points in the in the evaluation of the grant proposal if we allowed for hunting. So okay. it helped us get the grant. Hmm. And is that, is that something that's then required in perpetuity? Um, uh, I, I guess I I'd, have to, it is. I would have to ask them, but I don't know if we'd be able to take it out, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's, I believe, what is it, Steve? Is it five permits for bow hunting only? It's bow hunting only for a three week period in early November. Um, I think we do 15 or 20 permits. Okay. Okay. Is that the state was permit? obviously very interested in expanding, you know, access for hunting. It was a, it was a big component. Yeah. Should we, should we modify that to say specifically bow hunting? Yeah, we weren't yeah. even sure if it needed to be in there, if that was a residence, you know, I don't, we didn't know. Well, again, I think that's probably a little bit from the survey last time, because that's when we were going after Peace Park. So that's why <laughs> yeah. we specifically asked that question. I, mm -hmm. I suppose, you know, exactly. we don't need to have it in there now. Yeah. Well, and my thought is, if you put it in there and you get a big response, what are we going to do? Allow hunting in the parks? <laughs> I delayed well, it. That could, yeah, it could help us with a future acquisition, as Grace was talking about, of you know, getting you know more property somewhere. I mean, it, it might help us. Do we need the wording though? In the cert, does it for the survey too? It's up to you guys. Or, or maybe just hunting. And recreation like or something well like that. Hunting. Yeah, I think you should be very specific about what type of hunting you're allowing. Yeah, yeah and, and I guess that was the th thing we were wondering is the other ones are very broad about developing new parks, acquiring land, uh, increasing accessibility, and then, you know, the hunting was more of a specific um, facility kind of amenity, but that makes sense given the last survey and the timing, you know, going for Peace Park. Right. I guess there were two more there on the next page, the pathway system and the millage. So, which I think are both appropriate, just tying into the other interests that are related to this survey. So Agreed. again, that's, I think that's a good one for, and again, if hunting's not important for people, then they can rank that at the bottom, so. Okay, on to 10. Oops. <laughs> I'm not very good at this, sorry. I think you guys did a great job. Yeah, it's very nice. Joe was um, kind this, enough to be the uh, note taker, so. Yes. <laughs> um, this one, we just kind of fit, uh, trying to get the wording to be more um, positive. Um, and then I think there's, it's still, a, yeah, it's a good, uh, a good question to have in there. Um, a couple of the answers were similar that we could condense. Um, and then adding none of the none of the above if it's not an issue for someone. And then, oh, I think not interested in no time used to be the same response, but not interested in no time I think are, could be very different for people. Um, so we broke those two up. Um, not too much on the next ones. Uh, so then we wanted to touch on pro if you look at 13 and 14 um, there's not a lot of park 
programming. There's, it's, you know, the programming is through private organizations or the school, um, which, you know, might be fee-based or limited access to certain people. Um, so would there be an interest and would people support the township expanding its offerings in this area for programming that would give more equitable, equitable access to all residents? Um, and then, you know, if you would support that going into number 14, what types of programming would be a priority and we can list the options. Um, 15, again, since this programming was not by the township parks, um, we figured this could kind of get covered in the other questions we were adding. Um, if you want to keep scrolling down, Jenny. Um, the one, number 16, we weren't sure if that was needed or not. Uh, we can kind of, you know, get that information with a lot of the other questions. Um, but if there's a, if we do have this question, maybe making it something some more metrics or something to be able to tell specific, more specifically um, what it is people aren't satisfied with. So I, I think that can kind of get covered with some of the other questions. Not sure if there's a lot of useful data from this question. I would agree. That one seems uh, as if it can be eliminated and I, I see you have it marked as a date. Delete, yeah. So um, this one again was a uh, rank your or uh, check your top five. Uh, this could be a ranking thing. Um, I think the select your top ones maybe works a little better, could work better here. Um, but then looking at this list and trying to kind of update it with uh, what we have, uh, you know, benchmarking against other communities, yeah. things that other communities might have that would be good in Cascade, um, and then just adding an open uh, other response where people can fill in um, other ideas, which I think is always helpful, um, so you can find some good ideas from the public. And Mike made a great point on this question to focus on park and recreation amenities and facilities and not to focus on services on this question. And I think that was correct. Fun. Me yeah, too, I, that was because, really good. Cause yeah, with focus, with the programming question that can kind of talk about some of the, you know, services and programming side of things. And this can specifically be the amenities and facilities. Um, let's see the about 18. Okay, this was the quadrant map and, you know, Steve, based on what you said that, that th there was some good information received last time about, you know, some of the underserved geographical areas of the township. Um, this could be something we keep in there. I would welcome any other thoughts on this from the committee. It's very I love good it. work, thank you. Yeah, that's very nice. Thank you. Do you think it would be valuable to ask the participants which park is their favorite park now, just to get some feedback of, you know, sometimes people say things and, you know, what they really want isn't what they say, or is that impossible in a, in a questionnaire like this? There's a question in there about uh, how frequently you visit the parks and each of the parks is listed. So we could oh, probably sure. okay, see that, that information yeah. basically from, um, from that one. Yeah, that's good. I do remember that one. Okay, so 19. This one I think is one that we uh, you know, could talk about a little bit, um, just trying to find the right wording. Um, took, taking out the word financially. Uh, so just, are you willing to support a new parks millage 
uh, you know, we have dollar amounts in the answers. Um, so just not to reiterate that um, verbiage. And then adding a response that would be, I would be more comfortable supporting the township as a volunteer, um, just to see if there's, you know, like Jenny said, a low response rate from that, the, the garlic mustard poll and um, see if there's a way to get more volunteer help as well, uh, which could be helpful if we're looking to expand um, the parks. Yeah, and just gets people, the residents more engaged. Yeah. Um, we had, Joe had asked Mark Fitzpatrick, who's the parks director in Ada, <clears throat> for his last uh, survey. And then we were curious about how they worded their millage, because when I started on the committee, there was a millage for parks, open space, and trails, and eventually they merged all those to get. Brian, is that right? Is that sounding familiar to you? I believe it's all one now, because their committee is the Parks, Open Space, Trails Committee. I, as far as I recall, I wasn't directly involved, but that sounds right. Yeah, I think so too. So we were just kind of curious, you know, how they worded and, you know, did we dollars per hundred thousand value of a house or how did they word it? I was also going to ask the uh, Grand Rapids Parks Director, David Marquardt. I was kind of just nosy what was in the area and how to word it. But last time we asked this question, the result, uh, the resounding pick was $50 or less, should you want to know. Hmm. Wait, Jenny, say that again. Sorry. So the last time we asked this question in 2014, the answer that got the highest pick, and I looked that up in the results, was $50 or less. Does that sound right? Steve's looking like yep. maybe that I didn't say that right. <laughs> no, you said it right. You said it right. Second what place was un uncertain. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, well, I think Grand Rapids out? Parks is $30 per whatever, 100,000. I don't know how they word that, but, and I think Ada is more, but I'm not positive. And I don't know, maybe that's something that we, you know, we, we kind of talked a little bit about how the, the options are worded right now. It's just the flat rate, but, you know, do we put something based on a per, thousand dollars or per it, it, to give it uh some scale as far as far as uh the, the level of tax that you'd be responsible for so I don't why know don't we get, oh i'm sorry mike go ahead i'm oh, sorry go ahead grace why don't we get information from i know ben swayze our manager has told me and i just can't remember it but steve or brian um compare it to the path, how we did the pathway mill, how the township did the pathway millage, how much a mill is worth, that kind of basic information. Yeah. I think that'd be good just so, you know, people aren't reading it and thinking they need to write a hundred dollar check to the parks or something. Right. Yeah. And the, the scale and the information is important for that because um, if people, if, if, when you get this far into a survey, um, you were on that's question 19. Um, you want to make sure there's clarity. Yeah. So let's see how we did it, how the township did it with the pathway millage back when they did that and um, kind of not mirror, but we'll get that information and basic value of a mill, that kind of stuff. We don't need a full, Ben has said this, I just can't remember it off the top of my head. And then I think it's helpful as a good follow up question, you know, to know what that millage the money would be used for. Um, so you know, with, with the talk about the programming and new and expanding parks, uh, creating a parks department or director, um, and then adding the recreation programming um, as one of the options as well. And then we talked about earlier on the trails and pathways that's in blue there. That was just the previous question. So this could be updated um, 
with newer information um, or we could simply put the open more open-ended one about additional pathways and trails um, that they'd like to see or certain areas connected by trails and pathways. And then we talked about uh, adding one about volunteer activities. So, but as you can see, you know, there's a few that we can take out and then there's a few new ones we wanted to add, but we're in that, you know, about 20 questions, um, which, you know, gets pretty long. How, how many responses were there last time? Do you remember, Steve? How many was there? 169. Okay. We had 20 questions last time. 20 of those. Do you remember how it was, how the township sent those out? If it was online or how did, how did we? Yeah, we had, we had done a couple things. We had done the, the little focus group session. They were available there. We put them on our website. Um, don't believe we sent it in the newsletter, but we, you know, we used, we used the website. It was on SurveyMonkey. And it, it, you know, to be honest, that, that wasn't a terrible response rate. You know, if you compare it against some of the other surveys we've done, we always want more, but yeah, it wasn't bad. Well, and that was one of our discussions that we wanted to bring up today. And I'm sure you and Brian and Steve did too, about how else we could try to gather other ways to gather, you know, input and, I was talking about, I loved when we met to talk about, was it the fire station? You know, we broke in small groups and we got to put stickies on things, you know, that I think this survey could adapt really well to something like that. That was great. Yeah, we had done the, I think it was the penny jar where you had, you know, 10 pennies. And so you had to prioritize. Um, so that was a really interesting way to see how people voted for certain things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and uh, i don't know chance? i just signed up for the township uh email news thing is that are there a lot of people that have signed up for that i don't know what the current number is um but it seems like it seems like it should be higher uh than what it is but um i can certainly get that number for you it's not a huge number no we need to push that too we can do the township needs this. If you guys are volunteering your time on this kind of stuff, which is super helpful. The township on our end can work on getting it out better. We have a part time communications person now, too, that will do a better job, I think. Well, and do we have a I don't know if we're going to do it this year, but the 4th of July, um, where we're right there in front of the library, where we kind of close that street down and we have that <laughs> carnival. Uh, and the book sale and everything does do we have a cascade parks booth where that be a good opportunity to grab people as they're walking by and hey this is this is the plan what do you think you know sign which we you know what you what you're interested in you know put your name down that might be a good way to just grab people and not so much force them to vote but basically force them to vote yeah yeah, I think we talked about that a little bit last time and we've done the booth before for other surveys and it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it hasn't been very successful. I think people are just busy when they're, when they're out. Um, so that hasn't been that um, successful and there is no, you know, 4th of July get together this year because of COVID. We can mention it in the newsletter you know those uh those quarterly newsletters do you i always read those always have read them the paper ones mm -hmm. do you guys read those i do yep yeah. but i think we're yeah, all the newsletter is always good as grace mentioned we've got the social media you know people that we can um you know use i think uh maybe we talked about it before or maybe brian and i were talking about it but other places have done where you put the little QR code, you know, in the parks. And so when people are at the parks, they can scan the QR code and, you know, that'll take them to the survey. So I think there's some ways that we can, 
you know we could do that in the newsletter too yep oh. yeah i do i do think having something at the parks because you know my garlic mustard poll that i did in um <laughs> may i was just bowled over every time i went to check out and then the actual day how many cars were there i mean there's basically not any parking spaces every time i went so yeah that's i think a great way to try to in fact, I, if Jenny was in charge of the world, I'd straighten out that kiosk and use it for more useful information for Cascade because they're just a ton of people. Well, Jenny, at the garlic mustard poll, when I pulled in, I was like, oh, great. The parking lot's pretty full, but it was to use the park. And so it shows like we'll get it out. At, the township can up our game as far as getting it out to people. But it was just kind of funny, full parking lot but they're not pulling garlic mustard. No, I mentioned before you got on the call, they asked, Don asked how it went. And I told her you and your family were the only ones that came. <laughs> uh, and what, I'm sorry, I forget his name, but you know oh, what? Eric, what? Eric was there. Cause I had a little family crisis and I had to disappear. So Eric took over for me, who is one of my favorite master naturalist graduates. But that's not on you. I mean, you pretty much single-handedly organized it and then so we can I can't remember but I don't think it was mentioned in the newsletter was it maybe it was yes it was in the newsletter because I got two people that emailed me as a result the other thing that I thought was really interesting Stephanie also wrote in the newsletter that if any other organizations wanted to do a garlic mustard poll to contact me and I would help them organize and I got nothing I was surprised I thought there might be some scout groups or something out willing besides the garlic mustard crazy lady that lives by Burton Park. Oh yeah. She there, you, there usually fun. is Jenny. There, there usually is. And I think um, again, COVID, COVID. Uh, a lot of those groups were not meeting in person because the scouts in the past have generally responded well to this, particularly in pulling even on some of the school properties and, and uh, along the path system. So uh, this past year is probably not a good indication of what past performance has been pre-COVID. We can always try snail mail too. I don't know if it's okay with everybody. It's a little pricier, but we have, this is the perfect timing because we are starting this, the, the strategic plan, which is basically, let's start and make sure that the township's priorities are aligned with residents' priorities. And so this is kind of a subcategory. The timing is very good for all of this. So maybe let's talk about timing. So we've got this first draft and we need to obviously clean this up. Uh, what, what are we thinking about timing? I know we were concerned before about, you know, with COVID, we wanted to be able to do things like the open house and the penny jar. And what, what are you guys thinking about timing? I guess, I mean, if, if we can give enough time for the survey and um, integrating some other events and engagement with the survey uh, this summer, that would be good. And then um, I think the plan, it needs to be done, submitted in February. Is that correct to DNR? Yeah. So, you know, working back from from there to be able to present a draft plan to the public and, um, you know, working back. So you guys have enough time in putting that plan together. But I, th I think we're, we're in a pretty, pretty good shape for still being able to do enough public engagement and have this survey out there for a while. But it'd be good to get it out sooner than later with some sort of strategy. Um, an overall engagement strategy that aligns with the survey. Um, if I might suggest, you know, if, if you looked at something like a, an, an August, September, October window, you're getting people who are still using the parks here during you know, high recreation time of summer. Um, you're catching people before uh, as the uh, return quote to the area as school begins, but before some of our snowbirds leave, um, that 90 day window seems to be a, a, a good target for public input, personal opinion. 
I'm curious to know how many people <clears throat> on the board here would prefer to fill out a snail mail delivered to you rather than going to a computer and checking out some digital process. Do you actually fill out things that are delivered to you if you're interested? Or are you more susceptible to going to online uh, surveys? Definitely online for me. Snail mail for yeah, me. I'm a I'm bit a of a nerd. I would say online, but Matt, that's a really good question. When I Very think about question. where I live in this condo complex in Centennial Park, you know, and I'm by far the youngster of the group, um, I, I'm guessing the majority of the residents would, you know, like to fill it out by paper. Because I, I also know that they loved getting, because I heard about it constantly, the they postcard. Love mail. <laughs> they love mail. And they yeah. love getting the postcard, knowing about the fire station meeting. And they just thought it was yeah. great to be kept in the loop. And, you know, they but were I think talking it, we, about it. We definitely need to have both available um, just because we need to, we can't exclude anyone because they, you know, don't have access to a computer or phone or don't know how to do that right or you know or don't want to fill out the hard copy so I think having having both available is critical and if we have hard copies available at the township offices at the library um, maybe there's a way to have hard copies at the park some of the parks um, if we can keep them you know secured in one of the kiosks or something but yeah, along with that, is it called QR, QR code? Yeah. QR code would work very well because you could also put that on bulletin boards. Um, yeah. You can put it at school buildings. Uh, QR code is so easy to circulate um, and they're fairly common. Um, they are, yes, are a little bit nerdy, um, but um, they've become ubiquitous. They're on all kinds of products now. So I think people are very familiar with them. Yeah. I would also suggest, uh, I don't know how you do it because it's kind of mixing the messages, but a number of my folks that live over here and other friends of my mother's have not realized that the township hall has moved. So I don't know if there's also a way to throw in there on some of the things you're mailing or whether, don't forget that our new location is da 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 for the township hall. It kind of cracked me up when they said, well, when did it move? <laughs> Have you seen the signs? It just says it's a fire station now. <laughs> we do have somebody online that wants to, that has their hand raised. You guys want to take a comment from the public? Sure. sure. Cassie, can you patch them through? Yes, I can. It's Joe and he's hiking. <laughs> Keely? Hmm. Maybe not. Well, maybe while you work on that, Cass, one thing, you know, I think you're right, Don, we sort of need to work a little bit backwards because the newsletter only goes, goes out quarterly. So we'll have to find out, you know, when that's going to go out so we could time that, um, you know, to get that survey out, to get all this information out. That's, it would be nice then to be able to tell them, yup, and we're going to have a follow-up meeting and do the penny jars and, you know, you know, September, October, or whatever, but it would be nice to kind of have that schedule by the time that newsletter went out so we could give them a sort of a comprehensive update or, you know, information about how the survey is going to work. We just don't have it quite yet, I don't think. So um, the June newsletter is supposed to go out in June. And then when's the next one? The fall. They come up quickly. 
but yeah, I I'm have... not sure what the date is on that. And I guess I was more concerned with the timeline to get it to get into that fall uh, newsletter. So we'll have to. Um, I have that on my list to talk to Stephanie. So we'll we'll get that um, date and find out what that schedule is. And maybe that's what you know Brian and I can do. If, I don't know if you guys have done a lot of work, you know, messing with that survey. We can certainly clean that up and put together a uh, timeline, maybe send that out with the cleaned up survey so everybody can, can have that. And then uh, maybe at our next meeting, we can sort of- Yeah, and technically our that. next meeting is not until September, so. Yeah, that's how, do you next guys, how does the next- How does each committee member feel about um, more frequent meetings? That four times a year? Because I feel like personally, you can't get a lot done if you're just meeting quarterly, but I also don't want your your time more if you. Ginny and so Joe and I talked about this a little bit too. And I think because this is a year where we're doing the master plan process, it may be better to meet more frequently than an average year. Um, so if we need to meet uh, monthly over the next, you know, four or five months, we could do that. Um, but that wouldn't have to be a permanent thing. Uh, but I think it might be, we thought it'd be helpful to meet more frequently, uh, especially while we're trying to do all this engagement. And it's pretty critical time, I think, for the committee and the parks for Cascade Township. I agree. I agree. And yeah. if people can't make it, that's understood. We've got a nice committee. So, but if, if people are okay, I think we should try to set monthly not indefinitely, but but if you've got something else going on, I it, it totally makes sense. But if you're willing to do it, I, I think that's a good idea. It's hard to get momentum if the next time we meet is September. And you guys have done such a great job with the survey. And right. So you want to look at a time for July? Yeah, I'm looking at maybe the 13th is something like that work for you guys week after the holiday. Uh-huh. That works. Yep. So let's plan for that then. And we can have that survey and that timeline for you guys at that meeting. Perfect. Uh, the 13th will work for me. If we can maintain the 8 a.m., that is actually helpful for me since I am still working and, uh, uh, so that 8 a.m. I can generally squeeze something in. So I will put the 18th on my calendar. 13th or 18th? Thir I'm sorry, 13th, yes. I'm 13th. looking. Tuesday, 8 o'clock? Yep. Yeah. Yep. You want to keep it virtual? Just keep it simple? That would be great. That works. That would be, that would be great. I never know exactly where I'm going to be. What month was that on the on the thirteenth? July. 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 Okay. And then, do we want to pencil August while we're talking? Sure. I'm wide open. Um, the tenth is, is tenth? the second Tuesday. If we stick with this, with um, the second Tuesday, makes it at least consistent, I guess. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Sounds good. So what date was that then? August 10th. 10th. Virtual? Yes, please. Yes. Anything else on that, you guys? I'll shoot Joe a text um, so he knows. Mike, do you want to send us the, the survey and Brian and I will uh, clean it up? Yep, that works. Okay. And let me know if you have questions on some of the notes. Um, I'd be happy to yeah, have a call with you or whatever to kind of go through it because it's kind of various iterations and thoughts that are still on there. So sure. I could even clean it up a little bit before I send it to you. So it's a little more clear. Okay. 
Thank you. It's very good work. I really appreciate it. That's great. It, it, it's, it's really a neat compliment to the three of us because Joe, Mike, and I come from all, you know, we don't have similar backgrounds and it was all very helpful when we were trying to put this together. Mike's got a lot of great uh, experience with surveys and it was as well as Joe. So it was just fabulous. Thank you for all the work that went yeah. into it. Yep. Want to move on to the next item? Because it's sure. almost nine o'clock, yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it is nine o'clock. Um, Brian found the park bylaws. I think you guys talked about it at your last meeting. So we thought we would, you know, give that to you guys and talk about it if you wanted to. I guess make the committee a little bit more formal structure. Um, there is some bylaws in place for officers and some of the things you might normally see on committees. So leave that up to you guys. I'm, I'm impressed you found a document from 1976. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Brian. <laughs> I think I'm not sure the officers are necessary, but one of the things I think would be helpful is a committee member to help draft the agenda. Um, for example, I sent an email to Brian about could we have an update on Peace Park about the erosion, you know, to follow up what we discussed, I don't know, three times ago. So, and then I didn't know if we like needed a space on the agenda for announcements, if people had, you know, I know we're doing a work day in July at Peace Park on Oriental Bittersweet. So um, I just was more curious, I guess, about the agenda than I am officers. I agree with you, Jenny. I, I you know, the officer, uh, we, the committee has worked well in its current state, I guess, for years. But um, yeah, agenda items, announcements, um, that type of thing, knowing uh, upcoming uh, things on the horizon would be very good from this committee. And, uh, and probably a little tighter uh, information from um, pathways you know, and, and that would be also helpful because I've always considered our path system basically linear parks. And so mm -hmm. that type of information would be helpful coming over to, uh, just to keep us in the loop. Does linear mean a lot like uh, part of kind of like parks? Pathway? No, just they're no, just the, the they're just linear parks. They're just straight line parks is a is a path um it, it's it's just a term used to describe a pathway system they're linear and um they often uh link together other parks communities ex or uh, community assets etc um if in other park systems around the country uh, they'll often refer to their path systems as linear parks We lost Alan. Yeah, he left. Yeah, Alan often has a hard stop at nine for work. I got a, uh, it says, this might be more for Cassie or Brian and Steve, the resident who raised, who was trying to speak up that there's no speaker option, option the chat is disabled. So it shows that she's, do you have an option to talk on you from the township? But then below it says the host has disabled attendee chat. I don't know Zoom well enough, but. Cassie, can you can you check on that? I thought we we opened it up, but she didn't. We couldn't hear. It should be available. The chat does look available. 
I can change role to panelist, um, although I believe that would put her on the screen. But that I can try be, that if you would. Yeah, I feel bad like. she's gone to all this effort wanting to talk to us, so. Should we try that? Yeah, yeah thanks. Are you there? There's no microphone up here. I must see something else. We can keep going and then if she's able to If she's able to, I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll text her, or call, email her. Okay. Well, maybe if but you guys want to keep the same structure for the committee, that's fine. Um, but probably would be helpful for staff then if, if we at least identified, you know, who we're gonna, you know, sort of run by these agenda items. So there's some sort of system to that. Um, obviously we have Grace as the township supervisor on the committee. I mean, to me, that maybe makes the most sense just to, we can certainly run the agenda items by her and make sure we've got on there what we want on there. Does that make sense? Yeah, but maybe we could brainstorm next time what the agenda format could look like a little bit more. I, I just don't find the format you use really helpful. Yeah, could we email the whole group saying, um, can we do an email saying, um, asking a proposed for proposed agenda? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. We could put a proposed agenda out and, you know, email it around and add something. I mean, we can certainly add these sorts of updates like you were mentioning, Don. That's fine. Yeah. We can, if you guys would find that helpful. The format I'm more familiar with, and maybe this is just organizations, but old business, new business, yeah. you know, that yeah. sort of. Oh, yeah. So the same format that uh, the DDA has. Yeah, we'll 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 use maybe a more uh, up to date agenda format, and we'll send that around next time. I think it's even like the township board agendas that. Yeah. Pretty much everything else except for the parks committee. We'll just update it to the. We're a legitimate committee now, as far as our agenda format. Okay. That would that would be helpful. Old business, new business makes a lot more sense. Sure. So what did happen with Peace Park and erosion? Yeah, so if you remember, I think it was back in November, you know, we kind of identified some erosion out there. And so um, we had a contractor go out there and fix it. So they uh, there was a drain pipe that was plugged. They fixed the pipe. They um, put in a bunch of stone. Um, did some check dams to kind of help with the erosion down the hill. And I know Mike had um, sent sort of a detailed, you know, kind of list, I guess I'll call it. And we were able to incorporate the um, couple of his ideas with the logs. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but um, I think it's, uh, it turned out quite nice and the contractor was able to get in there and do it, I think right before Christmas. Hmm. Has it been holding up pretty well? I haven't been out there this summer to look at it. Yeah, yeah, Good. it has. Good. Yes, it's held up quite well. It's much nicer and um, I, uh, I was worried about somebody twisting an ankle in there once there was snow or, or heavy, you know, leaf fall where it would have disguised the ground, but it has held mm -hmm. up remarkably well. So did it end up costing the amount that we approved? Um, I think with adding those um, logs that sort of directed some water to some key spots, I mean, that was a little bit more, but um, it was under 10,000. I, I think our original sort of budget item was around six, if I remember. Yeah, but it wasn't as 
yeah, there was some additional thing that, that was mostly just bringing in gravel and regrading. So it was a, makes sense to be a little bit more, but it was a lot less because I think there was like a $30,000 option or something that was a lot more extensive that we were trying to avoid at this point. Right. We kind of picked uh, yes. the middle ground, if you will. There was almost yeah. a, you know, barely, you know, just sort of fix it up and then the big fix. And then we picked that middle, that middle ground. So yeah, I think it turned out very nice. Yeah, it was. We, we, we avoided the simple cosmetics of a little bit of stone and actually went for redirecting the water, but not that really super expensive one. Yeah, um, cutting a lot and of trees I, I, and I that. do think it worked, it worked quite well. Uh, and having, I was out there uh, two weeks ago and it appears to have held up fine. Um, I know it has been a little bit drier spring than we normally anticipate, but uh, it all looks quite good. Yeah. And Grace, you got an email from a resident mm -hmm. thanking you for doing that. Yeah, so. that was, I, and it wasn't me, it was you guys. So yeah, Rick, the resident Rick Brown is his name. He, um, he said it looked fantastic, really loved it. He also had a question in the, oh, and he had noticed um, a lot of the trail signs, directions and stuff being um, how they were in poor condition before or missing and they seem to be somebody fixed those, he appreciated that. He also lastly wondered about um, an app, like a GPS app that maybe it's a QR code. I can go back and find his email, but um, that he's used in other areas when he's hiking that could help with um, trails. I guess Peace Park would be the one that's big enough to get lost in. I'll find when out. The foliage I'll find his when, when the foliage is up, it is a park you can get lost in. Um, the signage did improve dramatically out there. They, it had been a combination of weather and I think a little bit of vandalism, but the, the signage is much, much better. Um, I've not had to walk as many people out of that park. Um, but uh, QR codes, that would be another spot for QR codes um, at certain markers in the park. Uh, and primarily it's people getting lost, whether they've parked at Grand River or the Bolt Trailhead. There's a, there's a sneaky little, little uh, Y in the trail that you can suddenly find yourself at a different parking lot. Um, uh, so if you are one of those people who are pressed for time, it will make you anxious. If you're one of those people who take it easy, you've just simply extended your walk a little bit longer, so. Okay. But the QR code would be a great, great use in that park too. I'll find his email and uh, send it. I'm not so much worried. I don't have to worry as much not communicating. I know that was like a concern maybe when I first, I saw an email about that, but with the Open Meetings Act, we're, we can email back and forth. It's an advisory committee. The standards are, I'm not worried about it. So that might help with our communication too a little bit as far as agenda items and questions. If I can interrupt for a moment, I believe that we do have our audience member connected via telephone. Keely? Yes, good morning. Um, thank you all. This is the first time I've attended a park meeting. Um, and first of all, I just wanna thank you for your service truly as a 15 year uh, Cascade Township resident. I've just recently started paying attention. And um, so thank you. It was really helpful to hear all of your gifts. Um, and when you were talking about, I just really had a couple of things that if you're interested in hearing some of um, the residents thoughts, um, we've actually been talking quite a bit about what we've seen happen in Cascade in the last 15 years. And um, the survey, I never even saw the last survey that came out. So I would love to see um, a paper survey. Um, I think that was one thing that you brought up. So that's what I, that's when I raised my hand. And um, I, I also, and maybe this is the right place to share it. Um, I just wanna say that anything you can do to truly preserve our nature. Um, over the last 15 years that I've been here, I have seen um, us lose a lot of it. And it's not the reason that I, the reason I came to 
cascade is because of the the beauty and so i just returned from south carolina where they um where they're a conservative state and they protect and preserve their nature actually as one woman said we protect our oak trees like they're our children and you can feel it there you can truly feel the difference between where they've protected and where they haven't and um so i just wanted to share that and then the only other thing i heard you talking about that there's no 4th of July celebration, which I don't know if that's who made that decision, but that's sad to me because, um, well, for many reasons, um, everything else is opening back up. It's an outside celebration. And at a time when our community needs to come together more than ever, I, I would just encourage who, whoever makes that decision to reconsider and uh, if you don't want to attend, you don't have to. But um, so I think that's all I want to say. But mostly thank you um, for what you're doing to help um, protect our community. Thanks, Keely. Thanks for taking the time and sharing. Uh, thank you all. It's a beautiful, we are, we are blessed to have the gifts that we do have here and um, more and more of us want to do whatever we can to preserve them. So thank you. Thanks. Let's put you in the parks committee. I think we're a bunch of tree huggers, right guys? <laughs> yes. I'm like a wannabe tree hugger. And then you guys have all the brains and skills behind it. <laughs> like you do. <laughs> move on to the last item on our agenda is that all right i know it's getting uh -huh. late yes yes so please. don you've kind of already mentioned it um we have been trying to sort of incorporate the pathway system into the park system so i thought it would be nice to present to you guys the sort of our ideas for the maintenance program for the pathway so the board budget budgets about $100,000 a year to basically redo some of the pathway. It's built into the millage funds. So every year we do a little bit of maintenance, um, try to find the areas that need the most work. Um, I think Grace got an email. Jeez, I don't remember when that was, Grace, but it was a few months ago. A resident had um, submitted a sort of a list of areas. So um, that's helpful. Um, and then, of course, we use our grounds crew who drives the pathways, you know, multiple times a day and between myself and the township engineer. So that's kind of the list that that we came up with. And so um, what's probably important to remember is it's one hundred thousand um, dollars that gets us about tw two thousand feet. Um, a pathway to be able to to rebuild um so obviously we can start to you know find little areas we get a little bit more efficiency when we can build some uh, some stretches rather than you know a 50 foot piece here and a 50 foot piece there then we end up paying contractors to drive around instead of putting pathways in one of the ideas was to get started on this early because uh, contractors are very busy. Prices are a little bit high right now. And we thought if we got this done early, we could give contractors a bigger window. Oftentimes when we give them a bigger window to get the jobs done, uh, if we stay flexible, um, then we get better pricing. So um, that's kind of why we're working on it now. And uh, we want to get something decided on here shortly so this can go to the board for a recommendation. So the areas that we put together were on Cascade Road, just a little bit going south from Lairway Lake. Uh, then there's another piece on Thornapple River Drive, kind of in the Shagbark area. I think in my memo, I wrote 200 feet on both sides of Shagbark, north and south on Thornapple River Drive. It's probably a little bit more maybe going south than north, but the idea was maybe it's about a 400 foot swath. And then the big chunk is Cascade Road between Mount Rue and what I described as the South Manchester Hills Drive. So those were the areas that uh, we found and those meshed with the resident who had sent the email uh, for areas that they had expressed some concern in. 
Um, the last couple of years, you know, we've done some bridge work. We've done some approaches to the bridge. Uh, we worked on Spalding and Burton. So again, kind of uh, the idea of kind of spreading it around as well. So um, I know I'm kind of throwing a lot at you and it's kind of new, but that's the, that was the recommendation that we've come up with for the pathway repairs for this year. You guys have any thoughts? Do you guys want to look at this and come back at July and, and report on it? I think that'd be great. I, um, I, yeah, can go take a look at those areas. I use the, I live on Thorn Apple River Drive, so I use um, that trail and uh, Cascade Ro Road one as well. Uh, the only other spot, and I don't know if this would qualify for this type of funding, um, but a crossing of Thorn Apple River Drive um, at the element, Thorn Apple Elementary School at the road there, because the, right there, the trail crosses Thorn Apple. Um, I know all the kids riding their bike to and from school are supposed to go down to the light at Laraway Lake to cross. Um, but a lot of them, you know, don't want to go all the way down and back. So they'll cross right there. Um, and just trail users in general there, I see a lot of people crossing and cars are going 50 miles an hour through there. So um, some sort of a pedestrian crossing button or uh, with a blinking light. Uh, I don't know, but I don't know if that qualifies as the trail maintenance if it's specifically just for asphalt paving it is specifically for asphalt paving um you know that's something are you, it sounds like you're talking about a crossing at bridgewater yeah so certainly that's yeah. something we'd have to work with the road commission on to see if yeah. you know they would they would allow us to do that but yeah that would be separate from pathway repairs yeah yeah, that was one of the, on the survey, one of the suggestions from last time about what would you like to see with new trails and pathways. I'm fine with you doing, you know, I have more concerns and suggestions about future pathways and trails. Did you all see, well, I'm probably the only one that reads the Grand Rapids Press because my 91-year-old mother gets it. Um, but there was a great article on Sunday about how Ada and Kent County Parks have partnered together for Chief Hazy Cloud. And the bridge they're going to build across the Grand River to get to Roselle. And it just gets me thinking about what we could do to connect, you know, to North Country Trail and Lowell. And now, you know, what's going on with Chief Hazy Cloud and Ottawa County Parks is just about finished with the Grand Rapids, our Grand River Greenway, you know, so how else can we, you know, support what's going on regionally? So anyway, and there's quite a long list on from the last survey about what people want to see for pathways. So all that to say, fine with maintenance, I think you just go ahead. Um, just a quick question is, I, I recall that there was a safety survey um, uh, for the pathway system, um, specifically for three intersections along Cascade Road, the one at Thorn Apple, the one at Hall Street, um, and I believe the one at Laraway Lake. Where would information on that safety survey be found? Uh, because we've had three pedestrian deaths at those three intersections. And um, again, it's not really connected to parks, but on the other hand, um, information like that, if we knew where to find it when we uh, needed to, that would be good to know. Yeah, so that's something, I know the township manager is working on that um, safety audit for Cascade Road. Uh, Grace mentioned the strategic plan earlier. I think that's something that he's trying to dovetail in with the strategic plan, if I'm not mistaken. Grace, do you have any uh, up-to-date information on the safety audit? Nope. So can you can you get in touch with Ben and ask him, follow up with him on that? I'll follow up with Ben on that. But as far as I know, Don, there is not a, nothing, nothing has been completed in regards to the safety audit. Yeah, and I, I only mention that because the, the area that, that, that Mike mentioned is one of those hot spots as well for a potential tragedy. And so, um, again, it's something that 
uh, doesn't directly connect to us, but it kind of at least should be on our periphery of knowledge um, of the uh, as the path system is connecting our community. This is great because you see how it all kind of, we're not peace, we're slowly, we got the strategic plan, we're gonna, in, it's all integrated. There's all overlap. So I'll ask that we'll follow up. Steve will follow up with Ben. And then um, it also includes the township talking to the road commission too. And then maybe for that um, future agenda, um, to get Ginny's point, maybe what we could do is pull together a couple of those region-wide pathway maps, and then you can see how we fit into that system as well. And that might be helpful too. All right, well, I know I kept you guys late. Um, we don't have anything else for the cause. I don't have to keep you guys, but this the um, Thank you. Church on the Hill is, on the agenda tomorrow. I saw there was a survey out on my Facebook. I saw it. Oh, you did? See, I signed up for Facebook for the township and I, for some reason I never get it. So maybe I didn't do it right. <laughs> Which is kind of sad. The supervisor literally didn't pro doesn't get the Facebook updates, but <laughs> that's on me. So what is the meeting tomorrow for the Church on the Hill property? What is it about? To to recommend that the board enter into go continue negotiations. Basically, oh. the sellers have two have multiple offers, although some may, one part they may have some zoning issues or problems, but still there's um, more than one offer from private from developers and um, they gave us a 30 day um, kind of hold so the township could do due diligence. And it's just, so it's, it's up to the board and, the, but it's, it's partly my fault it largely because I kind of brought it up here. Everything's been, I don't want to say rushed, but kind of rushed because the opportunity came up and there, we don't have a set process necessarily. So I feel a little bad because there's a time crunch and there's not really a system in place. I mean, there kind of is, but to, to jump on these kind of things when they come up. So it's just in front of the board again. Hmm. It's just jump, to continue, it's to continue that window. It's not to make a decision. No, window, they don't, they are not going to continue the window because they oh. held off, gave the township extra time. So no, it's going in front of the board and there's been resistance by a couple two to three, three and a half. Anyways, there's a couple board members who don't think anything special about the property. So anything, if you guys want to reach out to me or call, if you guys want to email me or call me separately, that would be a huge help. I don't want to unilaterally shove this down people's throats, but I think it's, I strongly support it. Matt, I, I want to talk to you. And yeah. Everybody, but anyways, long story short, it, it's like pushing it. It's hard. It's got you. It's just yeah. And that just brings up a future agenda item, and maybe we need another subcommittee to hammer out some drafts. We do need to come up with some sort of process that we can use to evaluate when property comes available to say yay or nay about. Yes, and then the the strategic. So here's the the parks plan that was what 2014 to 2019. A five was it? Is that the right date? That's outdated. Not a huge deal. We're we're getting it. But when you go, when I read through that parks plan, all the language is there. The master plan, the language is there. Everything we've said it. We've we've paid consultants lots of money to put in the language that people want that we want to maintain. I'm paraphrasing, but basically that. Green space is important, a, a viable commu a, a community that people want to live in includes green space, recreational use, all that kind of stuff. The language is there. The board turns around and says, well, we want to hear from the parks committee. The parks committee does what we're supposed to do. And it's just frustrating because we've got all the stuff in place. You guys are volunteering your time. You have lots of experience. But then there's like this frozenness of, well, they're just staring at each other. So. I'm frust I'm not frustrated. I just. Can you invite me to the Zoom meeting tomorrow? 
I'll come to your house and pick you up while we do it. <laughs> yes, Matt. And it's, and Matt, I feel bad because you've reached out and I'm just, it's like, I'm going time wise. I just haven't been able to put the time in and I dropped the ball and getting back to you, but yes, absolutely. And then you've got a, a committee, me- a board member. Who, well, there's nothing special about this piece of property, but I'm the parks guy. I looked, we haven't bought a single, if, correct me if I'm wrong, have the, has the township purchased for a park any piece of property since the 2014 park survey, which is now outdated, was put out? I didn't see anything besides the DDA Tuffy Hassle Park expansion. So we have this whole process, we have it. We just aren't doing anything. And it's not the parks committee that I'm frustrated with. The parks committee, you guys should all have like, halos on your head because you're fantastic and exactly where you need to be i'm just it's just frustrating now because and 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 our park survey too it talks about the importance of it because we've got a huge rapidly expanding population now it's 2021 so we can look it's way faster and way higher than what the parks committee survey anticipated so that talks about the the importance of prioritizing this kind of thing based on this is a huge population growth. Now this population growth time frame is coming gone and we blew past that. So we've got all the, the pieces in place. We just need to do it. Not we as in you guys, you guys are fantastic. I'm just frustrated because it's like steering the ship. Old board. So, I, think, board. I think Jenny is correct in the evaluative process because we have had a number of parcels that have come before the committee that um, we've talked about that um, we've decided, you know, are they a future, are they a no, are they a go, et cetera. And so the evaluative process that Jenny mentions would be very helpful. It absolutely would be. And what I'm saying is that I heard from a board member, well, we need a process, we need a process. But sometimes saying we need a process is a, is an, is a, is a way to delay it. So well, we've got I, the I, I would disagree. I don't think it's a delay. It's just providing you more data that support can support a decision. And so how do we, yeah, do you have that data? So it's just on the inside, I'm seeing it all. Everything's here, but let's get going. And yeah, I'm not I mean, I, if you had asked, if you asked me, and I'll be point blank, Grace, if you asked me today, would I vote to purchase? I would probably say no because I don't have enough data in place about A, what the property is gonna be used for, if the dollars are you know, the right amount for the piece of property. And the other thing that is, what else is out there? I mean, is the family that donated Peace Park gonna offer us 30 acres next door and we gotta have that money? I just don't no, feel like I have enough thing. information to make a good decision. And so it kind of comes back to me, but there's only so many hours in the day. So check out online. There's the meet, There's the packet for tomorrow's memo, because those are the exact right questions, Jenny. And part of it is we haven't done anything for a parks millage, not you guys, but the township. We talk about it. We've done absolutely nothing. We've got an outdated park survey. The pathway fund is so well-funded that that Burton Street Bridge has gone up not a million dollars, but way over $500,000. It just keeps going more expensive. Despite the Burton Street Bridge just skyrocketing in price because they have to go deeper and deeper into the ground. It's just a much har- harder project. There's still, and it's in this memo, there's going to be about $3 million. Every project that was promised on that pathway fund millage will be have been completed. And there will be about $3 million left in it when it comes up for renewal. I got to be careful because it's not in front of me, but like 2017. So it is a, so there's, it's with no projects specifically to, to do. Now, granted, we'll find projects. I know people, but that is specific for pathways. It cannot be used for anything else. This particular property 100% fits squarely within a pathway trailhead. So there's funds there. They're not going to take away from anything else. And then due to the location and the size of the property, and we don't have a single trailhead. So we've got one parks committee, one, one board member who's like, well, I don't think trailheads count as proper pathway funds. They absolutely do. We don't have a single one. But then at the same time, that also allows us to kill two birds with one stone. It's a passive park, a passive because of the location. You've got lots of streets coming in. 
as far as so it's a passive use that serves a joint purpose as a trailhead parking restrooms then green space maybe some open areas so kids can kick a soccer ball and then as far as location goes which is so frustrating that all of this information has been there and yet staff or whoever at the board level doesn't put it together to actually make it happen you've got all these different areas in the township right well, where this particular park has to, space has to be is the only remaining open space that serves all of the adjoining neighborhoods. It's a fully developed neighborhood. There's, it's not like, a, oh, we've got some fields here that are open for subdivisions. All of the space in this area is used up. Nearby Tassel Park is close, but we don't have a pedestrian, a safe pedestrian bridge for kids and family and old people to cross. So you can't say, oh, well, you've got Tassel Park that you can throw a ball over and hit it. It just isn't realistic. So this serves a key portion of the township that's already fully developed. And this is the last remaining big space. So it's a passive use green space area with funds available from the pathway fund that's up for renewal and will have $2.5 million left, less than that, but over $2 million, even if we do this project. In the meantime, staff at the township level needs to get the ball rolling and get this parks millage going. It's like everyone just stares at each other. So thank you parks committee for doing it. all that information is there. So Jenny, your questions are correct and there's answers to all of them. And there's only so many hours in the day for this new supervisor. I apologize because Matt, I never wrote back to you. It's okay. just frustrating because you've got well, people throw, what do you call it? You've got, uh, obstacles throwing up because you've got a power play of old old leadership new leadership it's it's half about parks and it's half about a little political power play power struggle behind the scenes and it just gets old because there's only so many hours in a day and, and people who can help just come around and don't do a lot so i'm not you guys i'm just frustrated that well, there's a lot of change happening but good lord it's just it's slow is this a Zoom meeting or an in-seat meeting? It's hybrid, so people can do both. In person, which Matt, if you're able to come, that'd be awesome, anyone's able to come, or, but you can Zoom in also. I need to go. Grace, I appreciate you, I appreciate your passion, I appreciate everybody, and we'll see you next, sorry to be so abrupt, but I gotta go, my mom, I gotta go. Okay. No, thanks. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Diatribe. So when is the meeting tomorrow? Wednesday at seven and Matt, you are, have been on my list of people to call and email for three weeks and I apologize, I haven't gotten to you. Seven in the evening or seven? Seven, in the seven at, in the evening, yep. It's at the Wisner Center at the library. Okay, Wisner Center, the library. Do to, yeah, do you want me to get you like- Seven o'clock and I, I'm, I can feel free to voice my opinion more than that you're on the parks committee part of the thing is they sit we sit around with blank stares on our face and say well we want to hear more from the parks committee so the parks committee sits sits around comes up with a plan and then we're gonna we can go in more specifics but then the parks committee is told well let's hold off on that let's hold off on specific use ideas until the board asks for that because that's more down the road if we recommend if, if the, the township purchases it okay so the parks committee does what we're told by staff then the board turns around and says, well, the parks committee didn't really recommend a specific use. What the heck? It's just, it's silly, but it's just like, and then you've got a little power, a couple people whose egos are rubbed the wrong way because they're not getting to use to make all the decisions anymore. So yeah, I, seven o'clock in person. I, I, I recall this committee did ask for a very specific data about the uh, church on the hill property. One of it is I've actually not heard what a price is. We were given a price at this meeting that was in excess of seven hundred thousand um, dollars, and I've not heard of anything in uh, beyond that. We were given a demolition price for the building, which was around approximately thirty thousand. But we have said uh, in this committee, and I do recall many of these conversations because I asked a lot of those questions, topological survey. What could it be used for? What's the price compared to other acquisitions that have happened in the township for park purposes? Because the price per acre does matter as we compare it to what the voters decided for both Peace Park and for the Burton property. Um, so the fact that there may be funds available doesn't necessarily mean that we would spend them there. 
if in well, fact the purchase your, price your doesn't husband, make it. but John, your, um, husband, I'll, your husband I, I, who, I realize that that you have an issue with my husband's view of that particular property however no. the questions well, that have been asked by the parks committee have been legitimate questions to ask again is this of value based on that amount there is value and there's worth I don't want to be accused by any of the voters, and I do have a number of people who have approached me that are in opposition to it, who don't live near there, that um, we are enriching a land speculator with taxpayer dollars, because the land speculators did purchase the property, marked it up double and put a sign on it. And so that's taxpayer money, and we have a responsibility to spend that well and wisely. And you just mentioned a bridge over Cascade Road. I agree, that is a point where it needs to be safer. Um, we have the Thule property. We have talked to the uh, school district about the purchase of the administration building property for future yep. use. We've talked about AYSO. So there's a lot of properties that have been discussed in the Parks Committee. So I won't say that it, I, I don't uh, want to say that we have been stagnant or staring. We actually have in this committee and in others have made a very good attempt to provide recreational opportunities to this township, both enhancing the existing features and functions that we have, as well as looking for future opportunities. Our last one that we did was an all-inclusive playground at, at, that, at the center. So I don't, I, I know you're angry at Tom, no, for Don, what he has said about this, but Don, that is a manipulative. But thing I want, say. but I do want. I want no, to make a defense that, that there's Not value true. and there's worth. There's man, that is manipulative. Because, and I'm looking. To say, I'm, I know you're angry at Tom. That is not true. I called Tom and I talked to him for an hour. I'm not angry at Tom. We just disagree on a specific issue, and the right. points you brought up are very. Listen, the points you brought up are important. They're val. They're valuable, and and there's always a cost benefit analysis. I don't just, we just ultimately, after we looked at everything, have reached two different conclusions. So, and Tom had said, well, right. if we purchase this property, then then we initially, he said, well, no, because if we purchase this, then we can't purchase the Burton Street, at, the admin building at Forest Hills. I said, why can't we purchase both millage, all this kind of stuff? So uh, it's not so simple as I'm- The admin the building project. is at this point, not for sale. It will not be for yeah. sale for probably two to three years Which would um, make because they have not would, finished the plan at the Fine Arts Center. Which means that, it doesn't seem to be a hindrance to our ability to purchase another property. And also the that property does, would be it, pathway funds. I, so, hey, Don, Don, like I'm not angry. I could not vote to approve that. That's fine. You don't have I to. Just That's based on its value. Neutral. But don't say that I'm angry at your husband. That's not true. You okay, also I will, I will retract that you're angry, but you are you are passionately involved with wanting that piece of property and there are other people in the township who are passionately also opposed to it i'm and looking at a letter that was forwarded to me by steve underwood which gives a very yeah. detailed financial breakdown for not doing it and, and there's actually a number of good points raised in that great points and you know it's funny that you don't mention those are absolutely great points and there were two negatives from steve and then a carol t meyer and then the, you didn't mention like the 40 plus positives so Yes, I'm not saying it's, an, it's a slam dunk. I'm just saying you and I disagree on it and you and your husband agree and that's I have, fine. And I've, I've, I'm I've, mad at, it doesn't mean that I'm mad at him. I'm not mad at him. But the more questions, the I best way to that. stall it is to, is to throw these questions out, these questions, these questions. I, my question is, have we bought a purse of property for a, for a new park since 2014 at the beginning of our outdated park survey? I don't think we have. We we have in, done enhancements to it, and if you consider the path system, there have been improvements to the park since that time. That has not been stagnant. I but I will I I will say that 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 I have gotten some suggestions for the use for the uh, Church on the Hill property. Um, one of which was a little bit intriguing, but a, I don't believe is a possibility. It had to do with arts councils and art co-ops which would involve zoning and that would be also an assumption that the building is still functional. Um, but I just, a trailhead is a parking lot. It is actually really difficult to, um, to make a decision about that kind of revenue for a parking lot, it really is. So I, um, I appreciate your passion for wanting it, uh, but in preserving natural and ecologically important spaces, 
um, that's kind of where I land. And I did not, I do not see the Church on the Hill property as ecologically um, or a natural space because of its size. It's simply too small. So I yeah, will, I will disagree with way. you. Limited and, uh, as far as that property is concerned, but I do hope we can move forward to, to find other parcels that are suitable as parks. That is the last parcel in that area. So I disagree with you, but it's it, nothing. No, it's just frustrating to have. Uh, it's just frustrating to be on the inside and see how things work and have the shift. But that's separate from it is, you make good points. I disagree. I, 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 I appreciate I, I that's okay. You can disagree. I just I I spent I spend all of my days disagreeing with people and uh, and making uh, trying to make some areas. But I will say that um, that there are a number of parcels available in Cascade that I do think uh, are are really valuable to us, like the Thule property. And it, and to Ginny's point with the hazy cloud, being able to reach out onto the floodplain at the Grand and be able to make some expansions to Peace Park going towards the Grand River um, is very ecologically significant and also very recreationally significant. And those are some beautiful areas to attempt to preserve. Absolutely. And so we I, can I do that. I would really love to see that as a future. And it's not an either or. That's yeah. why I don't I, I'm sure we can. It's not an either or. We live in a um, wonderful. Yeah, I, I realize that. I, I guess I do see. I do see taxpayer dollars as finite. So um, it's a. Uh, it it's absolutely. But, Which is why when your husband, we, you and I will ag agree to disagree. The six million dollars plus new administrative building, the over a million dollar remodel on our new township hall with just rubber stamped it, fully supported it. But then this is a huge expense for taxpayer dollars being financed. But if you look at admin buildings, storage buildings, brand new compounds, municipal compounds, there's no problem there. But holy smokes, you got a green space. That's expensive. Well, uh, like I said, we will agree to disagree. There is uh, there is a, a responsibility that we have for um, good use Absolutely. of the taxpayer dollar. 110% we agree on that. I think the value is much better this than, oh, I don't know, he just rubber stamped the over a mil, it's way over two times the estimated remodel expenses for this new admin building that's only used by staff. But then heaven forbid, it's a, 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 the last remaining park lot is the green space that could be a park for multiple neighborhoods. That's too expensive. Everything's a cost benefit analysis. And if you keep asking, it, part of it is being, is having everything in place so that when these opportunities arrive, we can we can jump on them. Because if you just if we just kind of sit around and look at them, they're going to go. We got to be nimble enough to take advantage of the opportunities when they arise. And since two thousand fourteen, the township I will has say not the... one single piece of property for a park is telling. It's two thousand twenty-one. Jump in real quick. Um, yeah. The you know the we had a pretty good discussion about this property you know, a couple months ago. Um, and I think in general, there was excitement for having this as part of the parks. Um, clearly the concern was the cost uh, with it, you know, being double what <laughs> they had paid for it. Um, you know, as far as that, they're going to receive that one way or the other because it's just the timing of it and property values have gone up a ton. Um, I think the key here is the location and that there isn't um, you know, that kind of land available around there. Um, but I certainly don't want to lose out on other uh, potential things because of this. So I, I think the funding and the price wow. were kind of the big hangups because we haven't finalized the, you know, the program for the space necessarily. If it is a trailhead and that enables us to use you know, yes. part of that 3 million, I think that can make some sense uh, because that wasn't, you know, a known when we were talking about this before. Um, I, I don't know if it's a known now as well, but um, I think that's kind of the important thing is, you know, what, what funding there is and for just the money's just sitting there and not being used um, as a taxpayer, I wouldn't be happy about that either. But um so I think it's the better understanding for the committee about the available funding um, 
and you know ideally we'd be through this master plan process to know you know what other areas are underserved uh this this type of a pocket park and trailhead isn't something that we really have a lot of um so that that is uh nice but um it's, it's hard to have a real global understanding when the information we have is a little outdated. May I, may I interject here for a moment? Matt, yes. Okay, so I live up the street from the park, so I've seen that park for 17 years. And I want to tell you that the worst thing they ever did was remove some of the primary trees there, or hickories, oaks, that sort of thing. That park is actually very diverse for an urban area. I'm going to call this an urban area because that's really what it is. Uh, there's a woods there that could have very small trails that go through it. We could have a nature interpretive park there for children, for families from all areas around here. It is a trailhead, but I don't know if I'd sell it as a trailhead park. It's true that that would fit into that, but what is the purpose? The purpose is to preserve the little bit of nature we have left. So a few years ago, we stripped the cemetery of trees. I was warned that they were going to remove a few trees. They removed acres of trees. That is all gone. Our area is much noisier because of the removal of that vegetation. If you do the same thing down below, you will also do that same thing. Now, you've already got a forest there. You don't have to do anything to that except name the trees and build a few trails through it, something passive and quiet and interpretive. The area where there's asphalt, you can take that up, you can remove the building, you can put a great, what we call monarch waste station, which serves for birds and butterflies. You know, we don't have much of that left, but I can tell you yeah. that we have many bird species here that go down to that park. We have deer down there. We have a number of mammals. If you'd like me to make a list for you, I could actually do that. But to say that that's not an important piece is probably not quite correct in my opinion. Any piece that is natural within an urban area is good and it preserves Agreed. wildlife. We have bluebirds down there. We have hawks down there, Cooper's hawks. We have all sorts of things down there already. If you enhance it with shrubs and trees that are native, not too much in an expense way, uh, you will have a lot more. And I think people will actually come there if there's seating available just to sit and watch it. It's a busy yeah. street. But I worked with the Olmsted Parks in Boston, and this is exactly what they did. They took small pieces and made them into parks. And, you know, this is 50 years ago, but nonetheless, that's what they did. So, you know, green spaces are going fast. You can build homes virtually anywhere, but the green spaces are at a very, very minimum. And I would, I would urge the committee, and I would also urge the township board to act on this and get a reasonable price and put in place a nice plan to make that a nature interpretive park, call it a trailhead, call it whatever you want, but don't diminish the fact that it's a really nice little ecological area because it really is. By the way, we have- okay. water. I don't know if you've seen them, but they're beautiful. Yes. Matt, I do agree with you that it's really nice to have these little niches and that, although I don't call that an urban area, I do call it a suburban area. Um, in that air, in that, and you're right. I think the the whole key crux of your statement in there is that if we can get it for a reasonable price, I think that is really the the crux of it. Um, because um, one of the folks that I spoke with, um, who had called me specifically about that property, said, "I don't understand why they want it as a pocket park. All of their backyards are pocket parks." quote unquote. And I said, well, yeah, I said, in suburbia, we have that. We have a lot of bird species and we have the, the wildlife that roam through and these little niches are important. It really did come down to, you know, can we get it at a reasonable price? So I would agree with you that there are these areas that we can preserve. Uh, Cascade has a lot of these little spots and, and patches through it. Um, and some, you know, uh, preserving our watershed areas are extremely important. So Yes. Uh, I am at this point getting paged by my boss and I really right. need to answer this. Um, and so I do need to leave this meeting and um, I appreciate everyone who has weighed in and um, I wish everyone a great day. Thanks. Thanks, Thank you. Don. Thanks Don. So I, if I can say one more thing before. We... Matt, yeah. yes, you guys are uh, all. Yeah, the best way to preserve green areas in an area 
is to have small patches that are ultimately interconnected. So if we have a linear park system, as we call it, our pathway system, connected to these small little islands, that's how you preserve nature. It's not like make a big park, like, you know, Burton Park, I go there all the time, but frankly, it's not a very diverse park. I like the park for walking, but it's not that diverse. It's a great park, but these little parks are where things, you know, they aggregate there and that's where you're gonna get the spread of things. You will not get that just by buying a big forest. The forests are relatively sterile. It's the urban areas that have interface between trees and grasses and stuff. That's where you find stuff. That's the end of what I wanna say. And I'll probably see you tomorrow because my neighbors wanna come down to that meeting if that's okay. Of course it's okay. I just yep. feel so bad that I haven't been in touch with you guys. Uh, yes, I, I wanted this conversation three weeks ago, three months ago. Well, we'll do that. Thanks, Matt. I, I agree. There's some great points about um, the opportunities there to preserve and protect. Thank you. You guys, the, and then the whole point of the, the trailhead, yes, it serves as a trailhead. It fits perfectly in within that, but it, but the funding, it's, it's it, right now because we haven't done a millage, which we are getting on, we're going to do, we're going to figure out how to do that if there's support, but the millage will, the parks millage will be happening along the same time of it. But in the meantime, immediate, when these opportunities arrive, the easiest answer is that doesn't affect anything else is all of this money sitting in the pathway fund. So I, I think a trailhead is, uh, uh, would be very beneficial there. And I think it's fine to, you know, say it would be a trailhead, but I think along Matt's lines, it's not only a trailhead. Um, right. So that's, you know, it's not, it's not just a parking lot. And even uh, the parking lot itself, if you, Joe had mentioned this, you, Matt, you guys would all know this way better, but like um, surfaces that are like, uh, it's not, you know, they have better drain, more natural stuff than just pavement. Yeah. There, there's and there's a lot of pavers and yeah, Joe yeah. mentioned that about some ways to do things um, a, a, a little more ecologically sensitive. And a lot of uh, grant, I don't want to say a lot, but that, that there's grants available for that too. It doesn't have, have to be like a, let's re, start Not from new spring. asphalt That's, yeah yeah and a exactly. million dollars making a trying to shove everything in there it's just what how matt described it a you natural what you have yeah, and calm. yeah and when you look from that you can literally look down and see parts you know a little bit of the little bit the village area the river all that kind of stuff yeah. there's this picture you know that cascade barber um shop oh, he's yeah. got old photos yeah he's got an He's got a black and white photo that's taken from around that area, or it might just be off Cascade Road right in front of that cross parcel that looks over at the, the bridge and what across the river at the downtown area. It's all fields. It's all it's fun to see because it's like a whole different area. And I think right. like, OK, well, 50 years from now, what's it going to look like? Right. How nice would it be 50 years from now to have that? And when everything's different, to have that tiny yeah, little exactly. parcel available. Yeah. Um, I have to log off as well. Um, Steve okay. and Brian, uh, I will uh, clean up that survey document that Joe and Jenny and I kind of worked on. And then I'll be in touch with you guys um, to kind of yeah, go over that and can send that to you. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks. thanks All right. Mike. Thanks, Grace, thanks, Matt, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank bye bye. I'm going to brush my teeth and. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.